water. Water is essential for all dimensions of life. Over the past years, the use of water has increased and in many places, water availability is falling to crisis level. As to other countries and population that are facing water shortage, Kenya is among them since is still mentioned as a water scarce country. For these reasons, the government of Kenya, through the Ministry of Water and Irrigation, the Council of Governors, together with the Water Service Trust Fund, Embassy of Finland, Kewasnet, Kenya Market Trust, Kewi, and other collaborations came together to bring the first annual Water Week 2016. As the guests were being ushered in, and every player and delegate taking their seats, innovators were also ready displaying their innovations. The conference brought together government institutions, water utilities, research and academic institutions, private sector institutions, non-governmental organizations, among others from around the world. The ceremony started with the Kenya National Anthem that was followed with speeches and remarks from the speakers and invited guests. I would like now to invite Professor Fred Segor to take us through the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you um, very much. Honorable Eugene Wamalwa, uh, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Water and Education. His Excellency, the Deputy Prime Minister of Belgium. Your Excellencies, Ambassadors and High Commissioners present. Professor Anna Tipajuka, one of our distinguished guests today. Honorable Lamina, Chairperson, Parliamentary Committee of Environment and Natural Resources. Government officers present, development partners, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Indeed, it gives me great pleasure to join you today and welcome you as the very key stakeholders in the management and also development of water sector in Kenya. 
Um, I want to use this occasion also to welcome Madam Professor Anne to come and make some remarks. Karibu Professor. Thank you very much, Honorable Permanent Secretary. Kenya Water Week has arrived here in Kenya, and what happens in Nairobi will soon happen everywhere. So, congratulations very much. I was actually in my constituents in Western Tanzania when I was asked to come in and join the WSSC team, which is here very strongly, including in the exhibition where we are battling out on a topic related to water, but which is not necessarily in the headline. That is namely sanitation. Mr. Chairman, I would like to say that in a world of 7.5 billion people, 2.4 billion, almost one third, lack access to adequate sanitation, of which almost one billion defecate out in the open. Most of these people without access live in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, and that's why I say when we meet here in Nairobi, you are actually leading the challenge that is facing us. I take this opportunity to invite my colleague, P.S. Patrick Duarte Mwangi, P.S. for Education, to make some remarks. Uh, good morning, uh, Chief Guest, uh, <clears throat> for this occasion. The irrigation subsector, which comprises of irrigation and drainage, water storage and flood control, and land reclamation, is pleased to be part of Kenya's first water week, whose theme, as we see clearly here, is from, trade, from aid to trade, enhancing business partnerships and innovations for sustainable water and sanitation provision and irrigation in Africa. I'm delighted, therefore, to be part of this global dialogue. As you may know, increasing flood productivity through irrigation, water storage, and flood control remains the core of realizing food security and poverty reduction for our people, as well as other sustainable development goals. However, the increase of land productivity for social economic development of our country, uh, what in that water is key is a key ingredient. In fact, irrigation consumes about 70 percent of global water in use. So it is key when we are considering issues of water uh, in a wholesome way. For sustainable water solutions in Africa in particular, it requires innovative thinking and strong public partnership in order to drive the transformation towards efficient and economically viable service delivery within the context of green growth. Minister, Honorable Eugene Wamalwa, CS for Water and Education, to take us through the rest of the program and to open officially the conference. Karim Wazi. It's been a great pleasure to be here today uh, to join you as uh, the key stakeholders in management and development of water sector in Kenya. I wish to take this opportunity to cordially invite and welcome all of you to this year's Water Sector Conference. This is an important event in the development calendar of the water sector as it provides an opportunity for us to report back to the public 
our stakeholders, discuss our performance and challenges over the last year, and chart the way forward for the coming year. Therefore, at the end of this conference, we expect to identify priority undertakings to drive and guide the sector forward over the coming year and beyond. At the Ministry of Water and Irrigation, we greatly appreciate the wide range of stakeholders who are participating in this conference. The theme of this year's conference is enhancing the achievements of Vision 2030 water and irrigation sector objectives through good governance and increased investment. This theme mirrors perfectly with the provisions of our constitution, which explicitly entrenches the right of access to adequate and clean water in the Bill of Rights. This constitutional provision puts into greater focus the mandate and obligation of this ministry and the entire sector as a whole to manage and deliver services to the citizens of this country. County governments have a fundamental role and responsibility to undertake in this regard. Understanding our roles with clarity in the new constitutional order is key to effective delivery of our mandate. The efficient and effective execution of the mandate requires additional support from the development partners and the other non-state actors. Development partners continue to assist their clients and partners to handle challenges by providing financial resources, advice, bringing comparative practical experience and assisting local leadership and management. The ceremony was then officially opened by Honorable Eugene Wamalwa, the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Water and Irrigation, who declared the plenary open for reports and discussions. The conference, next time, uh, next year, God willing, when we're back, maybe you should read the Kenya Water and Sanitation Week. We have an African saying, I think visitors are a blessing. And we thank you, Professor, for your uh, uh, improvement of the uh, title. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to declare this conference officially open. Thank you and God bless you. First of all, to congratulate the Ministry for this uh, very, 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 very important uh, uh, meeting uh, where uh, with all stakeholders uh, we interrogate uh, the water agenda uh, in our country. This is the first and uh, it's going to be annual and we therefore as Council of Governors do appreciate uh, this initiative and we pledge uh, to work with the uh, national government uh, to progress uh, this annual meet. Many of our counties, uh, we have a very uh, uh, serious uh, scarcity of uh, you know, water uh, for our people, uh, for domestic use, for livestock, for uh, irrigation. And so many of our counties uh, commit significant uh, uh, resources. So Mr. Chairman, uh, Your Excellency, uh, my colleague Mr. Eugene Wavalua, uh, Mr. Governor, uh, Your Excellency Professor uh, Tibajuka, it's a pleasure to see you again here this time in, uh, in Nairobi. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's a real honor for me to uh, be present with uh, you today here and to open this very important Kenyan Water Week, Maji Ni Rai. I, I will be brief um, because to be very uh, simple, water is life. I uh, was, was coming yesterday from Belgium with a gift for such a beautiful water week, the rain. 
because in Belgium it's raining 300 days a year. And so it was normal to come with some rain to, uh, to Nairobi. And I'm hoping that it will be so possible to uh, have rain in many other places in the entire country. Without clean water, we cannot live. We cannot be healthy, raise animals, grow crops, wash ourselves. Without water, in fact, we are nothing. My country, Belgium, understands the crucial importance of water for any human being and for any country's development. This is why we have decided to support water supply and distribution throughout Kenya with many projects, whether it is in uh, Kajaido, Iten, Vihiga, Itanga. We have set up new distribution systems, uh, built new water treatment plants, rehabilitated boreholes and built new infrastructure for clean water distribution to the Kenyan population. Your Excellency, respected guys and respected participants. Now this 21st century is really a situation of war. Yes, some media say religious war. But in this century coming the war of water. But I ask one thing, who is the minister who is really worried about the planning and uh, formulation of the plan of the country about the water? The only, all plan making by the companies and the all companies just bother about the profit of the company. They are not bothered about the natural resource or they are not bothered about the uh, uh, the interest of the human. So, this is the contacted driven democracy. This is the corporate driven democracy. This is not a real pupils democracy. The every government is speaking, we are the pupils democracy. But they are not really, not a single country who is running the pupils democracy. They are just running the company driven democracy, the company making the plan and the, uh, making the profit of the project, all project for the benefit of the companies. So my dear, I am saying in the end, if we are thinking about the better future and our common future, the one world, one water, equal right on water. So, the privatization of the water or the only water business is not a solution. The solution of the problem is communitization of water. This water made the company and taking the money, but they are not thinking about the common future of that region. So we need the communitization of the water. Water is the life and the life is never you make it privatized. So, we think about the communitization of water. I know if Kenya is interested and they are making uh, Panidar Tez, Panidar Rash Banna Chata, full with water, this country, this water we, yes. Today you can discuss the future of India with water and without water the future is not safe. Yeah, the Kenya Water Week 2016 is the first of its kind. It is the inaugural Kenya Water Week in Kenya. It's the first time we're having it. Uh, the purpose of having the Kenya Water Week is 
to bring our stakeholders so that they discuss on where we are as a country, where we need to go as a country, and the challenges in realizing the goals which we have set as a water center. And therefore, in this, in this conference, it is expected that the private sector will come, the government will be part of it, the parastatals of the government will be part of it, also the research institutions are also part of this conference. In addition, development partners who have assisted, who have funded the sector for many, many years are also part of this. Number two, we are using this conference also to look at innovative ways of not only financing the sector, but also in ensuring that we manage the sector in a sustainable way. For example, you are aware that when we provide water, the issue of wastewater management is very crucial. I've gone around in the exhibition places, there are innovations, there are new innovations in the best practices, best ways of handling and managing wastewater. Wastewater in this country is still below the expected sewerage system, average is around 24% in the country. And therefore, if we have to improve that 24 to move towards 100 percent then we want to look at the best cost effective way of managing our waste also so uh, during this conference during these discussions we are hopeful that at the end of it the outcomes will enable us to plan well for the sector the outcomes will also enable us to ensure that uh, the resources we have in the sector is commensurate with the kind of plans we've set so it is very enriching and as a ministry we are very proud to be part of it through the able uh, support of one of our entities, uh, Water Service Trust Fund, uh, which is the lead agency in terms of planning for this conference. Innovators and some of the key players of water and sanitation were not left out and they also had this to say. Uh, we are glad to be participating in the Kenya Water Week uh, 2016, which is the first conference being done in Kenya. And of course, it's a 10th annual water sector conference, which is being, which the report has been launched out, focusing on the water and sanitation uh, regime in Kenya, looking at the various ways in which uh, the, the development of water has happened in the, in the past of the country. We are glad as Davis and Chatley. My name is Carlos Chelugates. I'm the Corporate Communication Manager at Rift Valley Water Services Board. Uh, Rift Valley Water Services Board is one of the eight water services boards in this country. We are serving the counties of uh, Turkana, West Pokot, Elgoya Marakwet, Baringo, Nakuru, Nyandarwa and Narok. Uh, with a population of around 6 million people, uh, currently we uh, actually increased our coverage from initial 34% in the last 10 years to around 75%. But mainly what we are doing to, for this next uh, five days here at the annual uh, Water Week is to showcase a project in Nakuru. It is called the Itara Water Project that is meant to supply one million uh, liters of water to Nakuru County, especially the, 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 the Nakuru town area and some other towns of small towns in Kericho, specifically Chepseon and Chepsir and uh, Kedoa and part of Londiani and then also supply in Salga, we supply in Sachangwan. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity and indeed um, it is an honor to be part of the inaugural Kenya Water Week uh, being the first of its kind in Kenya. Uh, Kewasnet is really uh, very proud to be associated with this event. This particular conference uh, epitomizes exactly what ChaosNet was created to do, to talk about issues of governance, 
to bring different stakeholders together, but more important also to look at what are the contextual changes happening within the sector. And based on the theme of this uh, particular conference, uh, Aid to Trade, we are looking at very important shift within the sector about uh, a shift from the dependence on uh, aid with most of the funding partners now talking about the business environment. So how does the sector start having this conversation? Let me say I am delighted. Uh, the organization has gone beyond my expectations. As you know, this is uh, the first Kenya Waterway. It's pioneering. And when you pioneer, sometimes you don't know what to expect. But what I have seen this morning is gone beyond my expectations. I want to take this opportunity really to thank you know the, the event organizer that took on uh, the challenge rather late in the day but this is wonderful. I want to thank my uh, organization and all the partners that came in with whom we have been working. It's just beyond my expectations. It's wonderful. The speeches were great. Uh, during the opening, the messages were clear and what really captured my imagination is when uh, Tibai Juga talked about water is life and sanitation is dignity. I think that should now be the catchphrase for all of us so that those of us in water work very closely with the people in health. Eh? Next time, next year, I would like to see the Minister of Health with a stand here. I would like to be able to see the Minister of Environment here. Because you cannot preserve forests without water. And these are things that we, we, we as we move forward, I hope we, we get along. Most of the discussions were revolving around the water policy as they were emphasizing and stressing the 1999 water policy which was and still addresses the integration of water resource management, water services and waste water disposal and institutional framework. The policy objectives are to preserve, conserve and protect available water resource, allocating it in sustainable, rational and economical way to supply water of good quality and in sufficient quantities to meet the various water needs, including poverty alleviation, while ensuring safe disposal of waste water and environmental protection to establish an efficient and effective institutional framework to achieve a systematical development and management of water sector to develop a sound and sustainable financial system for effective water resources management, water supply and sanitation development. Centurion Systems is a technology transfer organization. We are based in Westlands, New Rehema House on Rafter Road, and we deal with uh, tech, uh, technology and innovation. Our biggest uh, client and biggest market is in training. Any electrical engineer that has ever been an electrical engineer and an innovator has uh, trained with Centurion Systems. Our training is 75% practical and 
tailored to the market needs of Kenyan industries. We have uh, 10 modules that we cater to. One is programmable logic controllers. Two is SCADA systems, which you will see here. SCADA systems are uh, predominantly used by the water services boards and water sectors and utility companies. They, they are used for monitoring, and that is supervisory and control applications. I'm the founder and MD of a company called Maji Milele. And what we do, like our company, Milele, we want water services to last forever. And we do that by offering prepaid water meters, which improve revenue collection enormously and which makes the revenue collection 100% transparent. How does it work? We have prepaid meters for communal water points and these ones for individual connections. So the ones for communal water points, people can only get water if they have a chip which is prepaid water. So people first have to top up and only when they have topped up they can get water from the water kiosk or the hand pump or the standpipe. So they go to that water kiosk. That water kiosk might have three taps, in this example only one. People go to the kiosk, they present their token. The machine checks whether there are credits. In this case there are credits, so the machine starts dispensing and the user now gets his jerry can, full to the brim. Unless he wants water, less water, like in this case, I stop it. And in this case, I only use 3.7 liters. And now I get a refund for those liters that I didn't consume. So I press the button again, present it again, and I get a refund. So it's pay as you go. And the liters that were sold are now also being monitored online through SIM cards twice a day. This computer unit collects the data, sends it to the cloud, and then we collect data like this. So this is data per month. This is revenues collected per month. This is water dispensed per month. We have data per month, per day, per user. It's 100% transparent. My name is Mukeli Mate. I'm the innovator of the application called Wartrack. Wartrack is a consumer intelligent platform that empowers users with information on their water spending. Currently, there is a water shortage crisis. So what Wartrack empowers people is to be able to know how much water they are spending and how much water they are overusing. With that, we can be able to, to give the water service, service providers enough transparency to their consumers. My name is Nahashan Nyambane. I'm from the Institute of Nuclear Science and Technology at the University of Nairobi. Well, we attended this conference to showcase our innovation on desalination, which is actually a new product in the market that uses the principle of electrospray. Now, out for some reasons, for the past few years, we have seen some problems with climate change, which has led to receding of underground waters, and this has made some of the waters that has been got from the boreholes to be salty. So most of the people, especially in the rural areas and in the uh, coastal areas, have been facing this problem of saline water. So we decided to come up with this uh, system to be able to see how best we can be able to help these people so that they can be able to remove the salt from the water to make it safe for drinking. That's the reason why we came up with this innovation and we applied the technique of electrospray. This technique is very efficient in terms of energy consumption and the efficiency of uh, production of water from this system actually is very much interesting and very 
uh, is very much interesting and actually very efficient. In terms of uh, percentage that we are getting at the moment is around 13%, which actually gives us around 1.3 liters of water in an hour. Challenges like climate change, disaster management and environmental degradation, water availability and competing needs from various sectors like domestic sector due to rapid growth in urbanization, industrialization, agriculture and livestock, tourism, among others, the absence of reliable information to undeveloped rural areas, lack of strategies for water harvesting and storage, high non-revenue water and low funding of water resources management. In water resources management, this is not a one-man affair. It's a collective responsibility for all of us. For those who are in the water sector, we all are required to come together and partner so that we do good water resources management for sustainable development. There are quite very key areas of collaboration. One of them is uh, in, in terms of our mandate, in terms of our mandate, in terms of uh, catchment management, this is a very important area where we are protecting our sources, our water sources, securing them, protecting them and conserving them. This is a very important area. The second area is uh, on pollution control. This is a very big area. We, we are trying to build business cases around this area so that private sector and other investors can be attracted to it as businesses. And the third one is on capacity building. We need capacity in terms of the institutions, in terms of the players in the, in, in the water sector, and in terms of our grassroots institutions, that's, that's uh, the rules. We need capacity and people who come with the capacity. Capacity in terms of trainings, in terms of equipment, in terms of technology. As presentations and reporting continue, way forward and other suggestions to curb the challenges was reached and some of the counties proved possible to achieve the implementation of the policies. My name is Habiba Rago. I'm the Chief Officer of Water and Natural Resource Mandela County. Uh, we are here in KICC participating in uh, Kenya Water Week, the first ever in the country. Uh, the reason why we are here at least we, we want to know, we want to make sure that other Kenyans know what we are doing back there in Mandera. So our main aim here is uh, to make sure that everybody who is outside Kenya, because they think Mandera is not Kenya, it is far away, but it is still Kenya. So what we are doing uh, here, we are... Uh, we, we have uh, our projects here in terms of photos. And, uh, we want to make sure that every Kenyan at least knows what Mandera is doing as a county. See? Through the Department of Water is doing uh, aquifer mapping, water resource mapping. The first ever done through the county government. 
one of its kind was done in Turkana, uh, but through a donor. And that a county government is doing on its own. We want to know where aquifers can be found in Mandera, uh, because there is not that much potential of groundwater in Mandera. So the satellite, the satellite mapping will help us get uh, the potential on the ground. The county government is spending 150 million on the same. Uh, this is a, a project that will give permanent solution to water in Mandera County, especially areas like Banisa and Mandera West where the groundwater is, uh, is just very hard to find. My name is Carlos Chelugates, I'm the Corporate Communication Manager at Rift Valley Water Services Board. Uh, Rift Valley Water Services Board is one of the eight water services boards in this country. We are serving the counties of uh, Turkana, West Pokot, Elguya Marakwet, Baringo, Nakuru, Nyandarwa and Narok. Uh, with a population of around 6 million people, uh, currently, we uh, actually increased our coverage from initial 34% in the last 10 years to around 75% uh, by 2015. We are undertaking a number of projects currently. Uh, if I'm just to mention very fast, we are undertaking the Itare Water Project in Nakuru County. We are also undertaking the Chemosus Water Project in Baringo County. We are also planning to start another project called Kirandich Water Project in also Baringo County. We are also planning to start uh, the COE Murun uh, Water Project in West Pokot. We have finished the Napu Water Project in Turkana and we have also finished the Narok Water Supply uh, in Narok County. And in Nyandarua County we are doing the Kipipiri Malewa. Those are the major projects we are undertaking currently, but um, there are small other projects for community that we are undertaking to improve coverage uh, and to make sure that most people living in our board area receive quality uh, water that is reliable and can be used for a long time. We also want to start new small schemes. We want to look other areas more than water. We look to other amenities like health, road network, schools, and see how much we can do the community living along the pipeline and from the dam area to Nakuru. That one is expected to start anytime soon and uh, we don't have a lot of uh, challenges there. Kick off, I think our mandate uh, has been emboldened by uh, the Water Act 2016. We were a financing mechanism, but now we are a financing institution. That is a huge difference. But going back to aid trade, uh, our peers were just saying the, uh, in the other previous uh, press conference that uh, defining for us what, what does that mean for Kenya. We are not saying that we are going to abandon uh, rural Kenya. I, I believe that we have what I call mature water companies in this country. I think it's a high time for a, a company uh, in our major cities to go to a bank, take a loan, because somebody somewhere is paying for that service. So why do you need grant? But that money, the pressure that you have reduced, as Dr. Sigi said, the pressure that you're going to reduce from that company can go to a rural company in Bomet, but not the Mombasas, not the Nakurus, not the Eldorets. I mean, those are now big companies. And, and they, are, they are collecting a specific amount of money from the residents. So now, why not go to a bank? If you want to go to area X, 
And that's what we're doing in the commercial financial way of our investment. So that is already there. So what we're saying is, as a country, we need to prepare ourselves uh, for, 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 for aid to trade. And by giving a break to, for example, the big break is required by our rural utilities. Because rural Kenya still needs our help. And I think that's where we can go and come in. In the long run, all the efforts could not go to waste and unrecognizable. So the organizers came up with a way of appreciating and recognizing those who have been working hard towards achieving good water services and sanitation. Among the invited were all the Ministry of Water and Irrigation, both the former and current, Kenya Water and Sanitation, Civil Society Network, Parliamentary Committee on Environment and Natural Resources, representatives of organizations, players, investors and innovators. The guest of honor was His Excellency, Deputy President William Ruto. Once again, a very good evening to you and thank you for joining us tonight to the award gala night. It's been an amazing week. The Kenya Water Week, those of you who have had a chance to spend time as well as look at some of the innovations that are going on around the water sector. And that's what we're here for tonight to celebrate. I'd like to welcome our guests, the Permanent Secretary, Water Services, Fred Sigor from the Ministry of Water and Irrigation, Cabinet Secretary, Eugene Wamalwa from the Ministry of Water and Irrigation, His Excellency, the Deputy President, Honorable William Ruto, ladies, gentlemen, and all protocols observed. My name is Terry Ann Chabet and I'll be your MC tonight. Tonight is about the Water Sector Irrigation Award and this particular award is divided into two. There's the Water Sector Performance uh, Innovation Award which will award the institutions that are, are taking lead in innovation within the sector. There's also the Water Services Trust Innovation Award and this is also quite an exciting one. It will be awarding innovators and in universities and our technical uh, colleges. I'm sure you've had the chance to speak with some of them outside. Quite some innovative um, proposals that they have and they will be competing for awards tonight. With that, I'd like to welcome up on stage the Permanent Secretary, Water Services from the Ministry of Water and irrigation, Mr. Fred Sigor Karibusana. Let's give him a warm hand as he joins us at Oscar. Your Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable William Ruto, Honorable Eugene Wamalwa, Cabinet Secretary for Water and Irrigation, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. 
It has been a very successful week. First Kenya Water Week in strong participation, engagement, and commitment. During this week, Your Excellency, we've used it to discuss issues touching on water. What are the stakeholders participating in the water sector? What kind of programs we have? The challenges we have in the sector? What are the innovations we have in the sector? And therefore, Your Excellency, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you and to thank you for finding time to join us and to be our guest this evening. Because of the fact that in our country, water is still described as a scarce resource. And therefore, what do we need to do so that we make it sufficient and valuable to everybody? And that is our mission and activity, Your Excellency, for us in the ministry. Given it is now my humble duty and uh, responsibility to welcome our Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Eugene Wamalwa, to take us through the next session and to introduce the awardees for the evening. Welcome, uh, Cabinet Secretary Eugene Wamalwa. Karibu This is Professor Fred Sigor, Your Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, all our visitors who have come, participants who have been here for the whole week for this first Kenya Water Week. And I think Professor Anne Vaiduka said we should call it the Kenya Water and Sanitation Week. We thank her very much for that uh, edition. And tonight we wanted to recognize and appreciate a few people. We know many of you have contributed greatly to the water sector. And across the sectors, right from the public to the private sector, to the world of academia, we want to thank you and thank our artists through their talents who have also contributed greatly to sensitizing Kenyans about water issues and sanitation issues. Excellency, it has been some very tough competition. What you have seen out there is a new beginning for the country. We do not want our universities to be ivory towers. We want our universities to actually go out there and carry research, come up with new innovations that will transform lives in this country, in this region, in this continent, and in the world. And we've had very many universities and institutions competing for the first time. And what you can see out there tells you that technology has become almost magical. And we do need technology excellence. We face great challenges as a sector. In terms of non-revenue water, Kenya has some of the highest challenges in terms of non-revenue water. First of all, we do not have enough water. And yet, the water that we supply in some areas, we cannot account for up to 50% of the water. That will be here, and we will be inviting the judge to come and uh, unseal the envelopes and tell us who the winners are from all the competitors. But no matter who wins tonight, we want to say as a ministry that you are all winners. You have all contributed through the innovation that you brought to the Kenya Water Week, and we appreciate you. And we are looking forward to making this an annual event where every year we can meet and look at the latest innovations and technology that we can bring to bear on the water challenges in our country. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Our Excellency and uh, our friends, this uh, Kenya Water Week is an open door for the communities and the stakeholder who is interested in the water. I speak, yes, the all national government worry about the food security, but if you are not worried about the water security, so you can't do the food security. 
so the first need of the water security and the climate security if we can do the climate security so we can do the water and food for everyone so i think this is the great uh, opportunity with uh, you yesterday morning and you you give the uh, real interest to me your excellency the deputy president cabinet secretary for water Eugene Wamarwa all protocols observed good evening i'll begin by saying that uh, cs eugene wamarwa seems to come after me many places i go in the legal profession in parliament in the ministry of justice and now in the ministry of water and i'm pleased because he's a guy who does what he does well i want to join everybody who this week has congratulated the ministry for holding the past ever water week and very successfully so i went to the opening session and also for involving other stakeholders in water we have seen some of them being awarded here tonight and i want to say it's really an honor and pleasure to be honored tonight and i say that on behalf of those who have been awarded when we perform public duty and service we do not do it to be recognized but because it is our duty it's our duty as people appointed to those positions or elected it's also our duty our civic duty as loyal kenyans loyal to this nation but it always feels good to be remembered that you did some work we really are truly honored we know there are many more people not just ourselves who have contributed to the water sector reforms I used to say when I was minister for water that our success was because the entire water family put effort. So it is on behalf of those members of the water family who served then who served now. It is on behalf of the parliamentarians who are working with Honorable Amina. It is on behalf of the private sector that Vimal has been uh, honored and it is on behalf of many other Kenyans like him that Jaguar and the beauties we have seen have been honored we want to say a big thank you to the ministry of water they should encourage not just us but others to continue serving diligently even when you are not thanked that service will go a long way into making our country what it want what we want it to be Thank you very much. God bless and we wish the Ministry of Water well. We wish the counties well represented by the governor of Wajia and we know by 2030 we will have realized the SDGs in water and sanitation. Thank you. Uh, Your Excellency the Deputy President is our guest of honor. Um, Waziri Eugene Omarwa, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Um, I'm uh, very happy and delighted to be part of this gathering tonight. Your Excellency, um, Wajia is water poor, probably the water poorest county in Kenya, with no lakes, no rivers. Uh, we are dependent mostly on underground water, boreholes and um, earth pumps and in the last three and a half maybe four years we have more than doubled our borehole cover we had 90 uh, that we inherited and in three years um, going to four we have successfully drilled 134 additional boreholes across the county. Um, the attempts were many, probably about 180. And we've done close to 60 earth dams. 
we're still nowhere near where we ought to be. Um, there's still many settlements um, that have no permanent source of water. We've been investing more than a billion shillings every year in this sector, uh, directly under the water department. But we also put in some money in livestock and agriculture that does um, have plans for irrigation. Um, the recognition that we've gotten here tonight is not only for us as Wajia County, but for all county governments, because I know all county governments in their way um, doing the best they can to deal with the water uh, problems in their various counties. And also, Your Excellency, just to say, uh, recognize somebody extremely important in the hall. The Kenya Water Week is the first in Africa. You know, we've been going to different countries for water weeks and so on and so forth, Europe, Korea, and so on. And in Africa, this is the first one. And we hope to make it an annual event. And being the first one, we were extremely delighted that the international community has given us a lot of support. We got a lot of visitors from all over the world. But an important guy that is in the crowd that really was the icing on the cake is Rajendra Singh who is a Nobel laureate in water. He just told us yesterday uh, even when you talk about uh, women rights and these rights and so on and so forth nobody ever talks about the river rights. Who looks after the river? Who looks after the trees? I thought that was just great. Your Excellency, the week also, uh, people have talked about water being life. And again, an interesting one was from uh, Anati Bajuka, who said, water and sanitation must always go hand in hand. And she said, water is life. Sanitation is dignity, and I thought that is a wonderful uh, saying that we will adapt to move on with. So, but I uh, don't keep you too much, uh, Your Excellency. As Water Services Trust Fund, we are the only organ uh, maybe the other organizations, but all the work that we have done in the country, we have gone back and looked at every project that we have done in the country. And we have documented that so that we know that this project that we did uh, is worthwhile and so on. So I just thought I wanted to give you a copy of uh, Maji Insight, Your Excellency, so that when you read at uh, your bedtime, you realize what Water Services First Fund is doing. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, Eugene Mamanwa from Cabinet Secretary for Water. Distinguished uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. First, let me take this opportunity to congratulate the minister and his team for the historic occasion that you've had here, the first ever Water Week. I know this has been put together by the efforts of many people, many stakeholders, sector uh, groups, uh, innovators, and professionals and managers of water, practitioners, service providers, and many people that have contributed to the success that we are uh, witnessing or we witnessed and that is culminating in this evening dinner. As has been said by many, uh, water is a critical and very important resource both for safe drinking water that helps us deal with matters, wide-ranging matters of uh, our health condition. It helps us reduce on the cost of our health provision. Therefore, safe drinking water is a huge component 
of human development, water for irrigation, as has been said here, uh, gives us the opportunity to produce more food, to reduce our poverty uh, levels, and better manage uh, humanity. Water that we need for electricity generation is important for us, again as a country, for economic activity and many of the other things that are related to the provision of electricity in our homes. We are cognizant as government that water being that important, running from safe drinking water, water for irrigation, water for generation of energy. And therefore, the consultations that went on this week here, I am sure, enriches what we know, what we ought to do, and our forward planning on this very important uh, resource. Let me also say that um, as government, we have a clear plan on managing our water resources. We have already mapped out, knowing very well the effects of climate change. We've already mapped out the areas that we need to carry out reforestation. Yesterday we had a discussion and already we have identified 5.1 million acres for planting of trees around the country. And the target is over the next 10 years. We should be able to plant 5 billion, around 5 billion trees on 5.1 million acres around the country. We have now uh, made it possible that we are going to fund those institutions from the Exchequer so that institutions can better access those services because they will now be provided free of charge. Again, that will give us an opportunity to make sure that all the projects that we implement have been assessed properly so that they are not only environmentally uh, friendly, but they are sustainable. They do not affect us uh, negatively. Let me also say that uh, talking to the chairman here, Mr. Kombo, that we are ready to discuss with the ministry. I think already we have provided a tariff for street lighting. And the tariff we have provided for street lighting is that they will be charged 50% of what others are charged. If the water services providers in the country are willing to have us sit down with us under discussion, because I'm told there are very huge bills on most of the uh, water services companies around the country. And if the water services companies are willing to pump their water at night, we can extend the 50% waiver to water service companies. <laughs> say congratulations to the sector best performers. Congratulations to the innovators that have been awarded this, this evening. Congratulations to uh, the policy makers led by Madam Mother Karua, who has uh, been recognized for her efforts in spearheading and the stewardship she provided for the reforms in the water sector, alongside all the other 
people that have been recognized here. I want to say congratulations to all of you. Achieving sustainable water solutions in Africa in particular requires innovative thinking and strong public-private partnership. I'm a trustee of the board. My name is Sheila Mugo. And um, really it has been a great joy having all of you here in this very successful conference. And I really thank each one of you for your presence and support throughout the conference. Specifically, I would like to thank the government of Kenya, that is the Ministry of Water and Immigration, which includes uh, the, the minister, the principal secretaries. I also want to thank the Council of Governors, the development partners, the organizing and sponsoring partners, the national and county government, institutions, and all the water companies. I would like to thank all the speakers, all the panelists, the national organizing committee, the organizing secretariat, the WSTF Board of Trustees, the WSTF uh, Chief Executive Officer, the management and the staff. I also want to thank the event manager, the rapporteurs, the national and international delegates at KICC, and also the Kenyatta International Conference Center, Convention Center for hosting this conference. I also want to thank all the innovators, the Wicca and the Mapia Innovation Awards, the performers, 
and everyone else who has been present. If I've not mentioned you personally, just know we're extremely grateful that you all, you all made it. And with that, I say God bless you all, and we hope to meet next year. The first annual Kenya Water Week 2016, from aid to trade. Enhancing business partnerships and innovation for sustainable water and sanitation provision and irrigation in Africa.